so we have a, a new prophet, Prophet Micah. So we had three prophets so, so far in our little weekday cycle here. We've had Amos, Hosea, and a little bit of Isaiah. Now, again, Isaiah is a, a major prophet, prophet, big book. But we get a lot of Isaiah during like the seasons of Advent and Lent and stuff like that. So the church only gives us a week of Isaiah. And then during those special seasons, we get a lot of, a lot of, of him during those parts. Uh, Micah was also a prophet during those times. So unlike uh, Hosea and Amos, who preached to the northern kingdoms, Micah preached to the southern kingdom. And uh, he was a prophet during the time of King Hezekiah. So you remember yesterday, Hezekiah was one of those rare good kings in the Old Testament who preached, uh, who, who uh, not preached, but who really wanted to institute reform and um, coming, going back to the covenant, going back to the Lord our God. Micah probably was a big part of that, that process for King Hezekiah. And so as we, as we read Micah today, Micah is just filled with a bunch of prophetic oracles. It's uh, seven chapters long. It's usually, again, there's usually judgment, lament, and then redemption, restoration. So there's like, there's like three cycles of that. Judgment, lament, restoration. Like I said, in the Old Testament, God gets this bad reputation of being the angry, mean, gen- vengeful God, but they never read the whole story. They never read the message of restoration and redemption that always follows after those mean passages. But really what's happening is, is God's trying to show us what will happen to our lives if we continue the path that we're going down. And so what what do we hear from Micah today? I think like also Amos, Micah, one of his big things is about this idea of the strong oppressing the weak. You know, and even the church points that out to us when they pick the responsorial psalm. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. You know, and I think we can, you know, in today's context, we can relate to that. The strong exerting their power on the weak. It's really an ancient human problem. It's nothing new. You know, there's nothing new under the sun when we deal with things of sin. Even going back to how they relate to that first story of Adam and Eve, it's all about what Adam and Eve taken, taken that fruit from which they couldn't, taken something that didn't belong to them. Why? Because they wanted to exert power. They wanted to be like God. They wanted that power and grasp it, you know. And we can look at our society and we can look at, again, how we treat the poor, how we treat immigrants or, you know, how we treat the woman in the womb. We can look at all that, you know, how we treat minorities. We can look at all that and and then we can we can point and say, yeah, that's the problem. Power exerted over the weak. But. I also want us to look within our side ourselves. I think a very common mantra we have to follow is first be the change in us in which we want to see in others. The gospel is always meant to challenge us, not to make us comfortable, but to get us to always look within ourselves and say, okay, where are times in my life where I like to exert my power over someone else, where I want to exercise control? It could be as simple as just, again, maybe telling your children who are all grown up what to do, <laughs> you know? You know, maybe your, your kids accuse you of that and you're like, no, I don't not. Look within our side ourselves, you know? Honest, don't be afraid. God wants us to do that so he can heal us. Again, the, the, the whole prophet is not, it's not, it's not judgment and lament. We don't stop there. It's judgment, lament, restoration, and healing. We should always seek within ourselves to be a better person the next day than what we were yesterday. Never stop and say, I'm fine where I'm at now. Never stop there. God's always want to give more and more and more every day. No matter how, you know, I don't want to say old you are, no matter how much life experience you have. Okay. All right. There's always something more that God wants to give. He never stops giving. And so don't be afraid. Ask for that gift of humility, starting with myself, but also with you. 
And then we can look on the outside and say, yeah, now let's make a change. But the change needs to happen within inside ourselves first. May God bless you.